learn about the off-grid lifestyle and to be inspired to live your dreams, click subscribe so you don't miss anything. Hit the bell notification. Do be careful of snakes when you do this. So I'm sitting up here by the tiny house that we're building, waiting for Fe FedEx. The camper that we're staying in until we get the tiny house built is down there. Of course, the road's way up here. When UPS delivered my solar panels, I came up here and waited for him because I, you know, they're solar panels. I wanted to get them in the wagon so I could carry them down and I didn't have to carry, you know, 50 pounds, of, I think it'd be like 40 pounds of weight down to the, where I wanted them. So. I waited for him and then I asked him, would you carry the deliveries down to the camper? He says, no, no, I would just take them back. He says, I, do, I wouldn't know where to put them. So that gave me a chance to get things started today and get some chores done up around here. Of course, I can go down there. I can hear him when he pulls up so I can run up here. So I got the incinerator running today and burned our waste. I wish I could remember to turn the camera on when I get this thing going such a basic design and as a matter of fact I didn't even really design it myself I mean the hole was already there I wouldn't have made it quite that big but it works perfectly I don't know you can see the smoke but it spirals out so it gets that vortex going and man I mean it just heats up so fast so that really incinerates things very well this morning I woke up and it was 48 degrees a little chilly <laughs> and I wasn't ready for it so when I woke up, I would have liked to have started my outdoor heat exchanger, but I had nothing ready. The tarp was still on it. I didn't have any firewood down here, no newspaper. So it would have been five o'clock in the morning. By the time I got it all put together, you know, it would have been already warm outside. So I'm preparing for next time. This morning, I just turned on the propane stove and it warmed us up pretty good. But next time I'm going to be ready. Now, it's been a long time since I've talked about the heat exchanger in any depth. You saw me taking the tarp off of it. It is very primitive looking. And that's kind of the point. I was experimenting with this. There was just really no way to heat the camper as small as it is. There's no way I could have put a, any type of wood stove in there. It's just too small. So I had to figure out how to get wood heat into the camper without actually putting a wood heater in the camper. And so I came up with an outdoor heat exchanger. I didn't spend much money on this. All the bricks that I use, I'm gonna explain how this works in just a minute. All the bricks I use were laying on the property, but even at that, they're only like a dollar a piece. You can find them online for a dollar a piece. I think I spent $50 on this old wood stove and I'll explain the wood stove in a minute because I know there are gonna be people who just scream at me about this wood stove. Then I, you know, the ventilation and the ductwork cost a little bit. And yes, I know it's supposed to be 10 feet up I get it, but there's no reason to spend a lot of money on this thing. It's only going to be here for one winter. Well, I mean, we'll leave it down here, but we only need it for the one winter. Then we're going to move into the tiny house, hopefully. And then we'll have an indoor wood stove, heater, whatever you want to call it. Now, this is all worked on physics. That's all this is, is just simple physics. I don't necessarily need a blower, although I did install one. But so how does this work? So what we have is we have an indoor wood stove. This is an old Franklin wood stove. These things are terrible at efficiency. They're, they're just terrible. There's cracks and crevices all over in this thing. But it only cost us 50 bucks. And it was something I could sit outside. I didn't care if it rusted away. 
It, my grandma used to have one of these in her house. She heated the living room with it. Of course, she had another wood stove in the dining room, but I remember this thing burning all the time. Now, we've already tested this. This thing works pretty good. We tested it in the spring after I built it. We had about a week's worth of cold weather, and we were able to run it. But it did leak, and so what it does is it just sucks the air in and burns everything just super fast. So you get about four hours burn time with oak wood. So I wanted to slow that down. I mean, I like to get six, eh, cross my fingers for eight hours of burn time with oak wood. What I got in here now is just poplar wood. Poplar wood will burn really fast, which is good for the fall time. You know, you wake up in the morning, it's cold. You just want to get a fire started real fast. You get up at five o'clock in the morning, come in, you light the paper, it catches on fire. And you know, by 10 o'clock, nine o'clock it's the flames going out but it's already you know 60 degrees outside it's 60 degrees right now and i think it's 11 o'clock now so i went ahead and loaded it up so the next time it's cold morning i can just come out here and, and start it up what i did was is i sealed up every edge what this is right here the white stuff it's called wood stove cement. And what it's designed to do is exactly what I use it for, is to seal up all these cracks, it's high temperature. Uh, it flakes off, but once you get it hot, then it'll dry on real solid. High reviews on this stuff. Everywhere you look, there's good reviews. And you can find it in, in a hardware store. Uh, different brands, of course. And then I put fiberglass seal, and I put that around all the edges the only door i'm going to have troubles with is this one because it's 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 a flexible door and so ever it just didn't work but that's okay i got all the other cracks and crevices sealed up around the chimney and everywhere so it should slow down the burn i'm hoping to get six to eight hours out of oak wood just like any other wood stove wood stove goes to right here it's just a firebox is what it is and then i have these bricks that are stacked all the way around these concrete blocks stacked up all the way around the outside of the wood stove. And so what the bricks do is it captures that heat, holds it in. There's no smoke in there because the smoke comes out of the chimney out of the wood stove, right? So it's just capturing heat. That's it. It's hot in there. And it can get up to three, 400 degrees. I think it's actually just under 300 degrees. Bricks start to deteriorate. I forget what it was, but inside the bricks, I've put dirt to help hold that heat in. Bricks don't really insulate that well. It just kind of traps it in for a little bit. And so these were getting pretty hot. You know, you stick your hand down there and they were getting pretty hot. I foamed insulate all the little cracks and crevices with high temperature foam insulation. That worked out really well. Now, what happens is, is now there's ventilation going down into this brick right here. You can see the ventilation goes down into this brick. So now all that heat comes out of this hole into the ventilation all on its own because heat rises. So heat's rising up. It's rising up from the bottom over here inside everywhere. It just rises up into this little hole and since this is all going up, uphill, heat rises right into the camper. The exit temperature I got coming into the camper one time was 212 degrees. So all you have to do is put a little fan in front of that and it blows it throughout the camper, keeps it very warm in there. Now, I should be able to control the temperature quite a bit better now that I have everything sealed up. I should be able to just open up vents on this and it, it bring in more oxygen, make it hotter, or cooler, whatever I need, because I don't need it 212 degrees. Uh, I think I was able to get it down to 140 degrees at one time, and it kept the camper pretty warm. And that's, you know, you're burning less wood when that happened. Now, I have another hole right here. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stick a piece of black flexible plumbing pipe. I think it gets to a temperature, I forget, but it was well within tolerance. I'm going to stick it out of this hole. It's going to come out of this hole. And I'm going to run it to my IBC tank right here. I do wish I'd had put my IBC tank a little closer, but that's fine. And then, so I'm going to put insulation, foam insulation all the way around the IBC tank. 
and then I can run that pipe in here. Of course, see, it's, it, I don't know if you get the actual feel of it, but that is lower than this. That heat should keep that water thawed throughout the winter. I won't have to do that all the time, just on the extremely cold days, you know, when it gets down to zero degrees and that kind of thing. I don't want to just waste wood, so I don't want to always be sending heat that direction. I want the heat to go in there. I also can recirculate the water and keep it from freezing a little bit. Just run my RV pump and just recirc the water right back into it, and that should keep it thawed out. So it's all getting hot around here. We're burning it up with the incinerator, and we're getting the wood stove ready. I also uh, put my wood underneath Carolyn's wash machine. She uses that tub, that bathtub, to wash blankets and sheets the bigger loads so i hope i can inspire you to stay warm this winter thanks for watching